Welcome to a lesson on finding two solutions to a first order initial value problem at a given point where there's not a unique solution. So we just finished discussing that if we have a first order differential equation in this form here with this initial condition, if the function f and the partial derivative of f with respect to y are both continuous on a rectangular region defined here that contains the point x sub zero, y sub zero, from the initial condition, then there exists an interval centered at x sub zero and a unique function y of x defined on the interval that satisfies the initial value problem. So now we're going to look at the case where we have a point that is not in this rectangular region and then find two solutions to the initial value problem. So we want to show the initial value problem does not have a unique solution given this initial condition and then we'll find two solutions to the problem. So we'll start by finding the region on which we would have unique solutions and then see where that compares to this point here or the point zero, zero. So the first thing we should recognize is this is already in standard form. Therefore, f of x comma y is equal to three y to the two thirds. And now we'll find the partial derivative of f with respect to y. This function only contains y, so it's pretty straightforward. We'd have three times two thirds y to the two thirds minus one should be negative one third. This simplifies to the three simplify out. So we have two y to the negative one third or two divided by y to the one third. Now we'll find the region in which each of these are continuous and then the region on which they're both continuous. Well looking at function f, there's no restrictions on y or x. So f is continuous on the entire xy plane But looking at the partial derivative, if y was equal to zero, we'd have division by zero. Therefore, this is only continuous when y doesn't equal zero, or when y is less than zero, or y is greater than zero. So the intersection of these two regions is where our initial value problem would have a unique solution. So we have unique solutions only when y doesn't equal zero. So when y is less than zero or when y is greater than zero. But if we look at our initial condition, we have y of zero equals zero. And therefore, the, and since this function value or this y value is zero, that tells us that this initial value problem does not have a unique solution. Therefore, there must be at least two solutions. So let's go to the next slide and see if we can solve this and find two solutions. This differential equation is separable we have y prime equals three y to the two thirds, or dy dx equals three y to the two thirds. So in differential form, we would have dy equals three y to the two thirds dx. Now if we divide both sides by y to the two thirds, we can write this as y to the negative two thirds dy equals three dx. And now we can integrate both sides of the equation. So applying the power rule here, we're going to add one to the exponent and then divide by the new exponent. So we'd have y to the one third divided by one third or times three must equal three x. And let's put the constant of integration on the right side. So we have plus, let's call it c sub one. Let's go ahead and divide everything by three. So we have y to the one third equals x plus c sub one divided by three. Let's go ahead and just call that c, another constant. Again, we're letting c equals c sub one divided by three. Now using our initial condition, y of zero equals zero, if we substitute zero in for x and zero in for y, we would have zero equals zero plus c. So our constant of integration is just zero. So we have y to the one third equals x. If we cube both sides, one solution would be y equals x cubed. But we just showed the differential equation did not have a unique solution. So there must be at least one other function that satisfies this differential equation and passes through this point. And it is, it's a very basic function. If we let y equals zero, 
notice how this point would be on the function, and if we put a zero in here for y, y prime would also be zero, therefore we'd have zero equals zero, satisfying the differential equation. So these are two solutions to the initial value problem, verifying there is not a unique solution. To verify this, let's take a look at the slope field generated by this differential equation. Again, we said there are two solutions, y equals x cubed and y equals zero. So if we graphed y equals x cubed, it would pass through the origin given by the initial condition, as well as the point negative one, negative one here, and the point one, one here. So our function would look something like this. But notice how if we graphed y equals zero, it still fits nicely in this slope field, even though the segments are hard to see along the x-axis, and it passes through the origin. So this does verify our two solutions to the initial value problem. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.